that is the super narrow channel that I'm not going to go up right now. There are rocks and trees and stuff, but there's a little rapid at the other end and a nice little bay that's very quiet. We often go there for swimming and stuff. But we are at the end of our lake system here. There's a miniature lake that you're looking at with two cottages. One at the end over there and one right here at the mouth of the small river. So this entire lake system is a river system really with uh, areas where it widens. And this is the very first channel on my way back to the cottage, which we are at the other end of the four lake system. So what you're looking at right here is the first narrow spot. And it's very narrow. You'll see there are two markers. I installed those because the one on the left you're seeing over there is the one I hit. Uh, usually the water levels are higher and apparently I don't usually get exposed to that rock. But this year was a different story. So I damaged my hull, sadly. I'm gonna have to fix that. It's a gel coat problem only, but I will have to fix that when I get the boat out of the water. In the meantime, I brought two jugs and I marked it so that I don't make that mistake again. And uh, you'll see the rocks here, they're pretty shallow. Right there, and one over there. And there's another one over there that's out of play here, but pretty narrow. It's a little deeper, but you have to be careful still. turtle. Almost ran it over. <laughs> Go slow here because there's a lot of trees. And we also don't know if there's a boat coming around the corner or not. It's fairly quiet here, especially in the morning. It's 10.30 in the morning here. Beautiful day. Also, I think I'm going to hit my 200 hour mark. I'm at 199 hours. As you can see lots of trees here. And very swampy, but beautiful. This is definitely why I like to have this jet boat. It allows me to navigate some pretty shallow areas. Obviously, careful with debris, but I got to know this river system very well. You know where all the debris is usually. A little careful. So if there are no boats, and after this tree, I should be able to accelerate a little bit again.
most of the propeller boats here have to raise their motors quite a bit to go very slowly. I don't need to go, but slowly when there's no boat at the other end, I usually go at speed through here. But uh, today I won't because I know the boat is there and I don't think the cottage owner would appreciate it. Right here it's not too bad, depth wise. It was very murky here for whatever reason. I think the little bit of wind has shooken up this bottom. So this is a little channel that gets us to the next lake, which is the biggest lake on the system, called Bull Lake. Bull Lake is uh, has one island, and it's not a very big lake by a lot of standards. Trust me, I know. I also boat on a much, much larger interior lake on Lake Nipissing in Ontario, Canada, uh, which is a much bigger lake than this. <laughs> the, uh, but this, for our little lake system, it's awesome. Great spot to come in tubing and water skiing because the lake goes for quite a ways and don't disturb as many cottages. But you have to be careful. Hence the boat. Don't want to disturb. Let's accelerate. Beautiful area. Now this is the narrowest channel in the lake system. I cannot go fast here for sure. So this area uh, fluctuates up and down in the year with the, the, the water levels. Right now it's pretty darn low. It's not as low as it can go, but it's pretty low. And it gets shallower and shallower. And around the point over there where the rock is located on the left, you can't see, it's a completely blind spot, so we often meet other boats here and we have to be very careful. It's a very tricky thing. I'm hoping there will be no boats today. So, you can see how shallow it gets. Navigating this corner with a propeller boat is quite tricky for a lot of people. They have a lot of issues getting through here. Beavers like to do their work here sometimes. Very shallow as you can see. So this is through the Narrows, then we get to the next lake, which is called Horseshoe, hence the horseshoe shape. Uh, so we're at one end of the horseshoe, we're going to go around the horseshoe and towards the end of Horseshoe Lake and towards another narrow river system to get to our final lake, the cottage, otherwise known as Crotch Lake. Yeah, that's right, Crotch Lake. Famously, we have a canoe that's green that we, uh, or I named, the Crotch Monster. My wife still doesn't approve after like 15 years of owning it. I still like the name. Kind of wish I got to call my boat that. Horseshoe's a lot busier. I'm gonna have to be careful with swimmers and stuff. So we'll accelerate here. And again, you'll see why 
this jet boat's awesome in these river systems. Because here it's another very narrow spot. And shallow. That's our bridge that we have to cross to get to the cottage again. And this is a bit of an issue in the springtime. The water levels fluctuate so much that you can't go under the bridge in the early, early spring. Uh, let alone if ever I were to get a wake tower, which I don't have. Uh, if I were to get a wake tower, uh, it could prove to be an issue in the early spring, even with it folded down, because I do have to cross under this bridge to get to our cottage. restored in 2007 based on the imprint I see up there. I remember when they were doing the construction and fixing it. It's not super deep but 15 feet but kids like to jump off the bridge here sometimes. These uh, two boats are owned by this guy over here on the back. You can see he has a really nice house there. He lives there all year round and uh, they own a huge area uh, property wise. Uh, not just like this property, but I mean like many hundreds of acres around this area with uh, very key areas for whatever reason they decided to buy a large area. And they have do not trespassing signs all over the place. Which I can understand there's a lot of people that with ATVs and things and it is his property so he can do whatever he wants, but So if ever we had mangroves here up here in Canada and Ontario, I'd say this is the closest thing we have. Every time I go here, it reminds me of like what I've seen in the southern US in mangroves area. We always joke that we expect to see some sort of dinosaur walking back here. We often see ducks, that's the closest thing we have to the dinosaurs. It is quite a picturesque area, but obviously very different boating from Party Central. This is definitely the opposite of that. Peaceful. have to stop there's a boat coming all right I had to interrupt here because there were some boats around the corner and it's extremely shallow one of the shallow spots let them go by but as you can see a bit of a few obstacles here It gets more deeper. You can definitely go faster here, but again, there are, there's a cottage after that dock over there. I'll accelerate. These guys are apparently 
clearing up the area, building stuff. I'm gonna accelerate after this dock and then uh, slow down at the mouth of the river before we get to our lake. I often go through at speed, but I know a few of our family members were out paddle boarding and stuff, and you can definitely surprise and scare them when you come out of the river, so I don't want to scare them. Those birds are very aggressive. They uh, are extremely territorial. Okay, make sure there's no boats in the channel. I'll accelerate for a little bit. We're good. the system and that's why I was saying you need to go slow because there's a boat there fishing. Sometimes there's paddle boarders coming out. It's also very, very shallow here. Just like everywhere else it seems. There's a nice rock I saw right there. Be careful. And voila, we're finally at our cottage, Crotch Lake. That's where all the cottages are located. There's about 15 cottages, give or take, at the end of this lake. And at the other end, there's absolutely nothing. The cot cottage lake is not very big. It is just big enough to do a figure eight comfortably with a boat to do water skiing. Uh, our cottage is the one with the sailboat that you can see the sail over there. It's the last cottage on that side. No neighbors on one side. And then that lake goes a little ways into the river a little farther. You can go around the corner and a little deeper in there and then finally there's a tiny little one or two foot drop that is by rocks and stuff and it's impenetrable with a boat. You'd have to go only by canoe. And yeah. That's... This concludes your tour of our mini lake system. It doesn't take long, as you can see, and this is why we bought a 165, not a 195 or any bigger boat. I think the 19.5 would definitely fit, but it's a lot big for this area. Maybe one day, once I decide to upgrade, we'll consider going to that. See, some of our family members are swimming over there. Bye!